Hey, what's happening? Sure. You went into last season with a really clear kind of number one priority. Resigned DJ. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious, to what's your number one priority with this team this year? Well, I don't know if we have a number one. We have a, uh, a priority to try to just keep making our team better. Um, we have a lot of free agents. Um, and I, that indicates that we did a really good job last year. But the problem is to do that, we had to have contracts like we had. And so now we have to try to do it again. We have to try to sign as many of our guys back as possible. You had a lot of turnover last year. And I yeah. think you would say that it did take a couple of months to yeah. kind of figure things out. Would you, would, that being said, would you like to keep as many of these guys as yeah, possible? Yeah, I, li I like our core. I like our, our, uh, you know, our bench was, was, was really good this year. Um, and it's obviously it makes your bench easy. You know, you look at Golden State as an example, as they have their bench intact, and so it uh, it allows them to be even better uh, the following year. So I would love that. It's going to be hard to do that. I know that, but that's the goal. Do you, do you expect the three guys who have player options to climb just because of all the money that's out there? Yeah, I think the whole league will. <laughs> I don't think a guy in the league won't. You know, so uh, and they should. They all should. So that's fine. How much more tweaking does this roster need? I don't know. I mean, um, you know, we're close, and we know that. Um, you know, obviously with the injuries, we just we literally don't know what we could have done. Um, you know, I don't think, you know, like Blake's injury in particular, uh, even during the playoffs, he still wasn't 100%. But uh, I liked how our team grew uh, through the season. Um, you know, I would love to have seen us 100% healthy going into the playoffs. Um, and that, obviously, if we hadn't have won it then, you would have known exactly what you need to do. So now it's, uh, it's more of a guesswork. But I think we have a pretty good idea of what we need to do. I'm sure a lot of teams are going to be calling you involving possible trade talks. Yeah, but that's what they should do. So that's, no, that's nothing new than what they do every summer. Um, and... You know, that's part of the basketball business. Um, you know, everybody wants to get better. You know, there's going to only be one happy team. You know, um, you know tell our guys that. You think uh, winning is easy. It's, it's, it's hard. You know, being the winner is hard. And, you know, Golden State did it. Uh, and somebody will do it this year. And then everyone else will be left trying to figure it out. And then there will be those same questions like they are here and maybe other places, why they haven't won it, you know? And so it's our job to figure out, are we close enough? But can you imagine any kind of a scenario where a team would present a package that would entice you to give up either um, Paul or... Uh, First of all, I don't talk about that. That's silly for me to talk about. I think you know that, so... But the answer would be no, but, you know, we'll see. You guys have two draft picks. Yeah. This year. How important is it going to be to hit on those guys based on the other things that you kind of have? Well, listen, uh, Dan, we're in the 20s picking. Mm -hmm. So if you're thinking you're going to hit a home run in the 20s, it happens. Mm -hmm. You know, historically it doesn't. Uh, but do you, but, I mean, that, yeah. but like, I mean, even like a double, you know what I mean, or something like that, if we're going to use a baseball analogy. Well, listen, not because get, it's silly. Uh, uh, no, if, if, if I'm thinking about, uh, we're going to do a great job in the draft, we're going to do the best we can. Mm -hmm. um, but to go into a draft in the mid 20s thinking you're going to hit a home run is just silly talk or double, all right. So, uh, and to think that that's going to be the one that takes you over, you know, obviously it'd be nice, but it's silly talk. Are those assets yeah. you can use? Though I know you can't. Yeah, do anything you can use anything night, with your draft picks. You know, you can do whatever you want. I know you said last year you would uh, call Austin's mom to, to if you needed to to help with him. Yeah. Um, do you anticipate it being uh, you know tough to get him to come back? Well, I think they all want to come back, mm -hmm. you know, uh, but, you know, they've all played well. Mm -hmm. And so they've all made it uh, more difficult. But uh, we're going to we're going to make a, a strong uh, effort to bring all our guys back. I think that's a better way of saying it. So um, and Austin obviously is included in that. How much input will you have uh, with Paul and his decision? Uh, very little. You know, I don't um, I, I just don't try to. I think that's so personal, you know, and, um, you know, I think that's a decision that Paul's going to have to make. You know, he'll ask, and I'll give him uh, what I think and very little of that uh, because I, I think players on as far as thinking about retirement have to come to that conclusion. I don't think um, even though I'm more than a coach to him, I don't think, 
you, you can give him too much information. I don't want ever want him sitting at home thinking why I did or didn't. You know, mm-hmm. I think that's a hard one. Um, I was never a great player, so I don't I don't get it uh, that part of it. You know, um, that's a tough one. Do you feel like he has another season left in him? Yeah, I do. Uh, but you know, I think the whole key is where he wants to be health wise and. And how did he feel through the season? I can't, can't figure that one out. You guys have had some success with minimum guys. Well, that's the only there. thing we could do. So. so how hard is it going to be next year when there's all that money out There's still there? minimum guys. You know, that won't change things. Uh, yeah. No, it'll still be minimum guys. And, and those are the guys that uh, uh, we may have to go out there again. You know, and, you know, we do have a little money, but not a lot. And um, we're going to have to be very creative again. You know, that's just the situation we're in because of the salaries that we have. And we have good salaries. You know? How does that spike amount, you think, impact free agency for, for I don't maybe not know for yet. you guys, yeah. but for the rest of the league? Well, I think um, it'll be interesting how the teams that have a lot of money use it. You know, just because you have a lot of money doesn't mean you're in a great situation, you know, and you can use it quickly. Um, so I think what typically happens when a lot of teams have money, uh, teams spend a lot of money, and then there's a lot of guys that thought they were going to get money and they don't get it. Uh, and I think that'll happen again this year. Apologies if you, I, I'm sure you've addressed this already in some form, but how, just broadly speaking, how do you tell when the margins are so thin, like if your team is just good enough, like if you're almost there? And you're well, there. I think you look at your numbers, you know. Um, how many teams were in the top five or top six in, in scoring and defense? Three. We were one of them. You know, the numbers tell us we're really good. Uh, since we're in an analytical world now I mean you can't use them when you want to use them and then don't use them when it doesn't fit your story you know so if you just go analytically uh, an analytical guy would look at our numbers and say I wouldn't touch your team you know um, so it, you know, it depends on who writes the story really and and from my standpoint I care less it's more what I think and our organization thinks but that's I'm just using that as an example when, when- Season like this, where you know you guys get hurt, where Steph goes out with an injury, for, takes him out for a couple of weeks. Yeah. Right? Is that, how does that influence your thinking of, of what a team can do going into the playoffs, even if they're considered you know the second best team, the third best team, whatever? Right now? Well, in the West, you know, unfortunately, we have the champions, the last two, you know, and that's just what it is. San Antonio and Golden State, I mean, they had historic years, you know. Um, yet, there's two other teams, you know going into the playoffs, I think, that believed that they could still win it. And that was us in Oklahoma going into it. That doesn't mean the other teams can't. But, um, you know, Golden State gets injured. You know, everyone around here, not our players, I'm talking outside of here, got excited. And then we got injured. Then everyone in Portland got excited and everywhere else, you know. So um, it goes back to what I said before the year where I wasn't making a personal attack at Golden State. Um, you know, it, you, you – Things got to go your way. And, um, you know, clearly, I don't think I've ever seen a team lose two guys in five minutes in a playoff game, you know, especially your one and two guys. But it, it has happened, you know. I had to go back to, I think, the Lakers with, with – and it wasn't their best two, but it was Magic and Byron, you know, with the hamstrings in the Detroit series. That's the last that I could think of it. Um, you know, we lost Perk for game seven, you know. Uh, but – it happens, it's, but that's part of winning too. I mean, you need you need that, and we didn't have help this year. Will any any of these guys need surgery? No, because uh, Chris already had surgery, um, so I don't think anyone else uh, will. I know they're doing their evaluations. They've done them the last day, and I think they have some more to do. But I don't think I think this summer we're surgery free uh, that I know of. Doc, will Blake be healthy? Throughout the summer and ready for training camp? I don't think he'll be healthy throughout the summer, okay. but he'll be healthy way before training camp. You know, he just had the procedure. And so whatever that it took, Anthony will take Anthony Davis and, and whatever it took, Iguodala, you know, he did the same thing. A lot of the guys have done this. So it's not that the procedure is not that big of a deal. You know, it just I know when you do it, um, I think there's non-weight bearing involved, and that's what takes – that slows the process – uh, you know, obviously, if you can't put weight on something, it's tough to heal it right away. So, well, the Olympics out for him? For sure, I or? think so. Um, I don't know, but I would guess yes. What about DJ? Does he still? Is he still considering the Olympics? Yeah, I think he is. I think he is. Um, 
with CJ, do you foresee him being on the brink of being a rotational player in the NBA? Yeah, you know, he gave us a couple of good minutes the other day. Um, yeah. You know, so I think he's done everything. You know, CJ's unfortunately just had, he has a lot of guys in front of him, you know, and so it's tough to move in front of players in the NBA. And he's been one of those guys. Why I, I love CJ is he put, he's putting in the work and he's gotten better. Jamal's accomplished a lot here. Yeah. You, know, you kind of use the success he's had to, mm -hmm. as uh, almost a recruiting pitch to bring him back. And yeah. Say, Look, it's worked so well. Let's keep it going. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think uh, the good news about the guys that are free and that are opting out because they should, it's their, you know, their financial purpose is I can't find one of them that doesn't want to be here. Mm -hmm. um, and that's mm -hmm. a good thing. That doesn't mean they'll be here mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, teams have money, like you said, and, you know, um, you know, everyone knows what we can spend and what we can't spend. And uh, that'll be the way for one of these guys uh, to get away where a team puts a number that we can't match and they know we can't. So that'll be it. How seriously will you guys discuss a, a D-League franchise this summer? And is that something uh, I don't know if it'll be, we're going to discuss it for sure. Uh, I don't know if we'll be able to do it by the start of the season, but it's something uh, we want to do. Uh, we're, it, we're ways away from it, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but we've, we've had the discussions with some other, some outside forces that could make that happen possible. You guys use that flexible thing a lot with CJ, you used it some with Brandon. Yeah, I didn't like it. I liked it um, in the fact that CJ and Brandon could play. Uh, I didn't like the fact that we had to ship them all over the country and, um, you know, we couldn't see them. So I would love, I, you know, we saw them, but I would love them to go away to, uh, or any of those guys and actually see our, run our stuff, you know, be coached by one of the coaches that was in training camp, you know, and, and I, I just think for development purposes, it's a better way of developing your own guys, you know. Um, but it was better than nothing, I'll say that. <laughs> you, um, you mentioned the, the analytics, you know, paying attention when you, all the time, when you, whether you want to or not. It, it, a lot of people would argue Austin analytically you could do better in, mm -hmm. in that position. I mean, obviously, they seem to disagree. What, what do you think he does that maybe the numbers do or don't show? Well, defense uh, alone. Like, it's funny. I don't know if his defense numbers show up great. Uh, but ask any coach in the league what they think about him defensively, and, and they'll tell you. Um, you know, and offensively, he's clearly improved as the year went on. So um, I'm going to say this again. Uh, at the numbers we're signing guys, mm -hmm. find the guys at those numbers. So I think, again, what you guys do is so easy. Well, we can get a better three. At the minimum, you can. Go find one. You, you know what I mean? So, it, of course, we can get a better three if we have $15 million to spend. Uh, so if you look at each of our guys, look at their contract, and go find a guy and match, it, match the guy to their contracts. And you may find one of 30 teams. So when you look at it th that way, tell me who we have that we could have done better. That's the argument for Austin, for Wesley, for you know, even Jeff Green at his number. And that's what I, that would be my argument. Um, of course we can find, um, we can find, you know, maybe we can get the best point guard in the league to back us up. But give me the 20 million to do it. So, <laughs> you know, that's the point I make. Like, go find someone. Tell me who they are before you make the comments. Is there a, a you know, kind of part of you that hopes somebody throws a like big pile of money at Austin? It makes it harder for you to come back, or just because it would be beneficial to him? Or no, I want to keep or? Austin. It'd be great. So, um, no, not really. <laughs> why? Why would I want that? You know? Well, just you know, it's good for his you know, financial future or something like that. Yeah, like I don't think I. I think that a lot of people think I, I want it because it justifies. We could care less what everybody else thinks, clearly. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, Austin's always going to be a target because he's my son. He's such an easy target. You know? uh, I don't think uh, if you watch them play, especially the second half of this year, if you still have questions about it, then it's personal towards father-son. Mm -hmm. You clearly don't have a basketball eye. That's what I would say. And the same thing uh, with Wesley and all of our guys, Cole. You know, Cole signed a minimum contract. You know, go find another backup big. You know, I keep hearing we need a backup big. Find me a backup big that was better than Cole this year. You know, uh, he was phenomenal for us. And, 
unfortunately, with the deals that we have, it, it is what it is, and that's what we have to do. So I don't want anyone to get big deals, but I want them all to do well, I guess is, is, <laughs> is what I'm saying. So I hope they all make a lot of money. I hope they all somehow make it here. I just don't know how that's going to happen. Would be my answer. When, when you took this job, you, you, you inherited a team that had three max guys. I mean, that was just the reality yeah. of the situation. Um, <clears throat> philosophically, you know, that presents these challenges where you can only improve marginally around them. Is that a thing that you're thinking when you talk? Oh, about yeah, three max guys are tough, you know, but you know, I knew that when I took the job. I knew coming forward was DJ's contract, and we we're going to have to give him max again. Mm -hmm. um, but we have three max guys, and – the difficulty with that is trying to fit in the guys around you. And the way we're doing it, I think, is the proper way. You know, we have a couple of guys, you know, the JJs of the world sign. Everybody else, we got to try to fit them in and move them around. Um, but that's why we've had so much turnover year to year. Do you think about the balance of maybe it'd be easier if we had two max guys? And we were yeah, everyone thinks <clears throat> that, you know. Um, but having three is good, too. You know, <laughs> our record says it's been pretty good. So, you know, you can go either way. Listen, if we had one, None of these questions. Sure. When you don't win, you get all the questions, and I get that. You, you stop with, with um, CP and Blake having the ability to opt out in 2017. <laughs> when did that process start with you guys? I mean, they will. No, everybody will. Everybody should. Really, so they what should. What is the process start for you guys trying to secure, make sure that you well, don't Well, it starts they... every day. You know, I think the process of keeping players start every day in practice. And every day that you coach them and your relationship with them, um, and knowing that sometimes your relationship, and fortunately with all those guys, are good. But, you know, your relationship is never going to be great with every player. That's impossible. Uh, and those are the guys that usually leave. Uh, you know, but we have great relationships with all of them. Um, and they also help us with other players. That's the great part. But like, we have a, a great group of guys that go out and – Part of the reason I think we've been very successful at signing these minimum guys is because they look at us as a, it, it keeps happening. You know, um, Darren Collison, uh, you know, you can shit Austin, Cole. Those guys are going to get deals this summer. Uh, and we're hoping them, they're here, though. You know, that's but the point I was making. And, you know, I think we've proven that you come here, your value goes up. And uh, our guys are the best recruiters. I can recruit all I want. But at the end of the day, it's our guys that do it. Doc, how much do you think Austin improved his stock just around the league and you know his reputation after what happened in Big Six? You know, I don't know. Um, I mean, I thought his play was better than his eye. <laughs> you know, for me, uh, um, it, it's funny doing the game. I, it's, I'm just so focused on the game. I didn't realize what he. You know, I didn't see it like, and then. Honestly, I said it after the game when I was sitting there talking to the team and you see them, then you realize, Jesus, you know, but it's, it's funny how blinded coaches are, like, during the game. I was yelling at JP, the trainer, like, where the hell is Austin, you know, when he was back there. And it, I thought the doctors were taking forever to do it. I didn't know what they were doing. <laughs> uh, and then when he came out, I, I didn't – I looked at his eye, but I just said, you ready? And then he went out and played. And I think because of the way he was playing, I wasn't thinking about his eye. And then after the game – Obviously, I mean, when you look at it now, you think, wow, um, don't know if I would have done that or could have done that. So that was good. It was good for him, but that's who he is. I mean, he's a, so it makes him good. It's, 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 and it was not just his defense. It's just his toughness. It's, it's a good trait to have in our league. It's a trait you better have if we, you want to be good. We know your thoughts as a coach. What, was your, what were your thoughts as a father? You know, after well, afterwards, I was very proud. You know, it was uh, – you know, uh, more, I guess, the next day because of all the texts and calls, you know, and, you know, you got the, you got a lot of, I got a lot of calls from other coaches around the league. And, you know, they didn't even ask, they kept saying, your son, you know, and I thought, wow, that's cool. What did your wife think? Um, he's nuts, but, I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, that's, that's typical uh, for, you know. She's talking about you or Austin. She, probably both. <laughs> probably both, yeah. But, I mean, she didn't say that. She just, you know, she wanted to know how awesome it was, really. She didn't ask about the game at all. It's all about, you know, how's my son? So. You guys, when, when you took this job, obviously you wanted to win a title. That was it. It's the only go. I thought the second, though, was improve the culture. We've done that. And I was going to ask yeah. you kind of how yeah, we've that, done that. that cultural stuff. And what have you seen the biggest growth? Well, culture? I just think all around, organizationally. Um, um, I thought our locker room this year was fantastic, you know, um, 
we absorbed a lot of stuff. I thought as the year went on, it got better and better. Um, I thought it showed with, through the injuries, but just player-wise culture. Um, but I think the reason the player-wise culture was so good is because the organization around it has grown. And um, I think I'm very proud of that uh, and, and what we've done in that, in that regard. Um, I think around the league, you hear players saying how we treat players. Uh, everything is first class. Uh, we cut no corners. Uh, we have standards. And I think our, uh, that's starting to grow in this league, and that's important for us. Uh, but it still doesn't get me to where I want to go, and I want to win a title. One of the things you guys have told was obviously what happened with Blake and, and yeah. Matias. Did you notice a change now that you can kind of look back in Blake after that? What did he learn from this experience, and did he, did he show growth to you through Yeah, I think everyone, you go through something like that, you grow, you know, or you don't, and you go the other way. But Blake didn't go the other way. Um, it obviously was something he wished he could have back, you know, but he can't get it back. And so from there, you either grow or you don't. And I thought he, he did a good job of coming back. Is, is there a sense, like, if, if you get through just for sort of one clean year where the, either the injuries were minimal, you, know, you don't have your owner popping off, or just yeah. so, stuff like that, like, eventually I, I, you get that one I just, year where you get Yeah, I mean, you would hope, obviously. I don't ever – you know, I get that question a lot on the street. You know, can you ever have a normal year? And, and I actually, my answer is – this is a normal year for us, <laughs> you know, for right now. Uh, but, you know, I don't know. Um, I don't worry about it a whole bunch. I really don't give it a lot of thought, um, especially with injuries. I mean, you can't control that. So uh, it happens and, and you move on. I mean, you literally do. You think about the next day. I don't let it get me down a long time. I can tell you that. I think you just, hey, stuff happens. You know, uh, I just have a tough time feeling sorry for anybody. You know, me or our, our group, when I look at the, the, the world <laughs> and think, is this our worst thing? You know, uh, so that's maybe how I look at it, and I don't worry much about it. In sports, we always hear about the, the window of opportunity. Yeah. Is the, is the window closing? Yeah. I mean, is, the window is it, always closing. You know, the window is never always opening. You know, I, and I believe that. Uh, I don't think our window is closed, though. You know, uh, but the window is always closing on every team, that's for sure. Um, and I think we'll know when it's closed. Uh, but I don't think it's closed yet. Does they have a close on San Antonio? And not yet. Well, they keep changing. They keep changing windows. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, and they've had, they've had great fortune in that. And, you know, give them credit. Like, they've gotten some of their key guys to take less and fit in, and, you know, because they're a lot older, you know. And, and so, you know, that's my goal is, you know, us win one or two and Chris and them are 35 and decide to take less, which you think they would back to, at that point and to keep winning. But you got to win it first, you know. You don't get that loyalty and then win it. You usually win it and then you get that type of sacrifice, you know, the Dirk Nowitzki sacrifice. Well, he won it, you know. Uh, Dwayne did it the one year. He had won it already, you know. It doesn't usually happen before you win it. So um, let's win it and see if we can – get all those sacrifices. But last summer you said you needed to get creative and you had more guys under contract. Yeah. Does that make it tougher this year? Because you, I think you only have six, six guys under contract for next season. Does that make yeah, it I don't know if it makes it tougher or not. I don't think it makes it tougher or easier. I think it's pretty um, – I don't know. I think I, I like the way the summer looks if things break our way the way we see they can. You know, but uh, we'll see. Doc, that you said that you like to stay out of the training room after your experience as a head coach. The mm -hmm. last three years, you've had injury complications with Jared. Uh, last year, going in this year with Blake Griffin. Do you still have confidence in the training staff going? Yeah, on? I think they're terrific. I think they've done a nice job. Um, when you have injuries, obviously, you have questions. But I think overall, um, we've been pretty good in there. Um, you know, when you, again, every exit interview, um, you know, from our players. And you ask about that department, uh, the guys that were somewhere else always say this is the best they've had. So when I hear that, I think, well, we must be pretty good. Um, Lakers made a move, obviously, we're picking up Luke. What do you, yeah. what do you know about him? In terms I, of I, I like him. I don't know, you know enough about him, but I like him. I know uh, him and his brother. And, uh, you know, obviously I know his dad, but, you know, I don't. 
No, I mean, I think he's going to be good. He was really good for 45 games or whatever. <laughs> uh, you know. How hard is it to import part of a culture? I mean, I know you brought some stuff from Boston here. How hard is it to do that when you're going to a place and just... Oh, you do it. I mean, when I left Orlando, I changed the whole culture in Boston. You know, um, that was my goal. Um, that's, you know, that's, you have to, you know, and if that's what he wants to do. I don't know. If that, I'm assuming that's what he wants to do. Uh, but it doesn't mean it's the same in each place. You know, the culture we created in Boston was different from the one in Orlando. The one we created here is a little different from Boston because of your personnel and, and the people. But uh, I think a coach has to have the ability um, to be able to try to change the culture uh, to the way he sees fit uh, for that, that team to win. And if he's not allowed to do that, he's not going to be successful. So uh, I, I can't imagine him not allowing Luke to try to do that. Is that the greatest benefit to being the personnel guy and the coach at the same time? Well, I don't know. We did it in Boston, and I wasn't. So uh, I think it just depends on um, how the relationship is. You know, I have a great relationship with the president here, uh, and so we do very well together. Um, but I had a great one in Boston with Danny. You know, and we did well together. And I think that's the key. Like, it, it's got to be a team. It can't be one guy doing one thing and the other guy doing another. I don't know if that works uh, anymore. It may have worked years ago. I don't think that works anymore. With, uh, with Austin playing with Chris, has Austin added things to his game that he saw Chris doing and that he's not trying to Yeah, I think anybody that is around Chris and Blake and all those guys, you, you add – you know, um, that little strange floater that he shoots is, is uh, him and Chris do that every day. Him And now J.J.'s trying to do it for whatever reason. I'm not sure why. Uh, but they do. I mean, they have the competitions. They work on it. And it, for Austin, it became a weapon because he's bigger than Chris. You know, and so, um, you know, it kind of changed his game, you know, as far as going to the basket. Not just that. There's other places, things like he's shooting at from spots where Chris goes to. Yeah, well, that's... He didn't do that when he got here. No, I think if you work with the guy every day and you watch him and you realize that you can get to elbows, you know, you can get to the mid-corners and, and make shots, it's very difficult to guard you. Um, if you can get to, the, get, get to the basket and then you can make the in-between and you start making threes, you become very difficult to guard. Um, and I think Austin has seen that. Because in-between is almost a lost art. Until the end of the game, you know, I always tell, you know, everyone talks about the in-between game and how it was a lost start. You look at the playoffs, uh, I think the in-between game is lost during the regular season. You look at the playoffs and where guys are making shots from uh, and look how uh, the, everybody's, you know, most teams' threes are going down. Um, and then look at most end-of-the-game shots. Uh, they're in-between jump shots. So I think you need everything. Again, that's where uh, you can't just have one. You have to be able to have it all if you're going to be great, you know, but uh, those few guys that have great in between games are going to be in the league a long time. I'm done with you guys until uh, October, hopefully. I'm not talking for the draft for the